Hi. Today, I'm going to tell you about how I helped a direct sales client of mine reduce their taxable income by over $15,000. But before I do that, let me introduce myself. My name is Timlin Bowens, and I'm an enrolled agent licensed through the Internal Revenue Service. I'm also the owner of Bowens Tax and Bookkeeping Solutions. We help direct sellers to minimize their tax liability with strategic tax planning. So let me tell you about how we helped this client. When they first came to us, they had a bag full of receipts. So they had done a good job at keeping all of their documentation. However, these receipts weren't labeled and a lot of them had actually been lost because the client wasn't very organized. So one of the things that we found was they did a lot of traveling in their car, but we could not claim the car and truck expense deduction because one, they didn't have an adequate mileage log and two, their receipts weren't labeled to tell what the purpose of fuel at that time was for. So they were literally missing out on thousands of dollars in a tax deduction. So what I want you to know is that the car and truck expense deduction can result in substantial tax savings, but you cannot claim them without having an appropriate mileage log. So this is how we help the client. First, we were able to sit them down and educate them on the two ways that you can track this expense. There's the actual method and then there's the standard method. So I'll share with you the actual method first. It's pretty much what it sounds like. You take your actual expenses, so any car improvements that you may have paid for, um, your gas that you paid for, the exact record amount of repairs and insurance. And then that's where your mileage log comes into play. You figure out the percent of miles that you drove for business, and then you use that percentage to figure out the deduction. For example, let's say we have Kim. Kim is an MLM owner in Minnesota. Each year, it costs her $135 to renew her tags. Let's say 100 of that is property tax. So after using her mileage to figure out the percentage, we see that Kim uses her car 60% of the time for business. So we take that 60% times the $100 and her deduction is gonna be $60. Now, let's go back to the standard mileage rate. This year, 2019, the standard mileage rate is 58.5 cents. Now, what's included in that standard rate is the cost for fuel, for maintenance, hang on, I don't want to forget anything, insurance and your vehicle registration. What's not included and can also be counted as a percentage is your auto loan interest, personal property tax, your parking fees and tolls. Now, I want to make note, under neither method can you ever deduct fines or penalties. So if you're on the way to a event or a vendor show and you get a speeding ticket because you were running late, sorry, that's a fine and penalty. You can't deduct that. I also want to point out that under both methods, you have to have an adequate mileage log. So for example, let's say I have a client that's 100 miles away from me. My car gets pretty good gas mileage. So for me, with gas prices here in Kentucky, that's going to cost me right under $10 to get to that client and then $10 more to get back. So using the actual method, I'd have a $20 car and truck expense deduction. Well, take the standard mileage rate at 58.5 cents and times that with the 100 miles. Now I'm looking at a deduction of $58.50. Then I have $58.50 coming back. So now using the standard mileage deduction method, I have a deduction over $100 versus the 20 if I used actual. So it's really good to sit down with your tax preparer 
and plan to see which method that you want to use. Another thing to note, you will need the date that your, uh, excuse me, you'll need the date that your vehicle was first put into business use. So let's look at another example because I really want you to see how important it is to have an appropriate mileage log. In a recent court case, it was in 2016, there was a taxpayer by the name of Alexander. So Alexander claimed 87% of their Hummer was used for business. The IRS denied that claim. Now I wanna point out, they didn't deny the claim because they were a network marketer. They didn't deny the claim because it was a Hummer, because that is a very realistic business expense. The reason the IRS denied the claim was that the taxpayer's testimony was very vague when it came to the business purpose of these expenses. And also, the documentation that the taxpayer provided did not give the details that are required in a mileage log when you turn it over to the IRS. So, the takeaway from this, if you are wanting to claim this, make sure that you have a mileage log because it results in substantial state savings. For my client last year, it was over 15,000. Alexander lost out on $13,000 of a deduction because they didn't have the adequate information that they needed. Make sure that doesn't happen to you. So if you have any questions, please drop them below in the comments. I love to connect with you. If you are a direct seller, tell me where you're from and what company you work with. Again, I'd love to connect with you. If you have any questions about this video and you would like to set up a free 15 minute discovery call with me, I will also leave the link to that below. So until next time, bye.